Amy, first of all, what do you make of Elon Musk's response uh, to your piece, which appears to be his first public response to this New York Times interview, which said that he alternated between laughter and tears? Hi, Emily. Um, it was an interesting response. I mean, I think, you know, Mr. Musk remained quiet for a week and he had a lot of options here. He could have said nothing at all, but instead he cho chose to deny crying. And I think it's really interesting and kind of speaks to the piece itself and talking about how women and men are treated differently in the workplace. And I think we view ourselves differently, too. Um, you know, we've read so many articles about Elon Musk yelling at employees, um, at journalists, and he's never denied those. But here he stood up and he said, I deny crying. So what does that mean? Do you think if Marissa Meyer cried in an interview with The New York Times that investors or analysts would have any sympathy for her? No, I don't. I think they would see her as weak. I think still in society, we look at women and men with just completely different lenses. Uh, women have to really walk this line in the workplace of being strong, but not too strong, of being kind, but not gentle. And I really think there's no place for crying. Now, uh, you've gone on to respond to uh, Musk's response, saying he could have addressed the double standard uh, between men and, and women CEOs, but instead he simply denied it. Um, do you think that's you know, part of the broader problem? You know, I do. I think that, you know, in the past year, in the Me Too movement and everything that's happened, we have started a conversation about how we look at women in the workplace and in America more broadly. But have we made progress? What's the next step? And I think at the Riveter, what we're doing is building this community for women to move forward. And we include men in that. I think that we're at an inflection point where men really need to stand up and be a part of the conversation. And I think it would have been amazing to say yes. You know, if Elon had said, yes, I had this authentic moment in my conversation with David Gellis at the New York Times, and that's okay, and that's good, because we need to show up as our authentic selves as CEOs, because startup life is so hard. Um, and so I think we need men to, to jump in and say, yeah, it's okay, it's okay to show that emotion. Uh, the Riveter is a co-working space that uh, is, is more catered towards women. It's sort of an alternative to WeWork, you know, so you have a lot of female founders, female um, uh, startup workers in your workspace. Have you seen much progress um, in the Me Too movement or is it more talk than action? I think we're really at an inflection point. If you look at the percentage of VC funding that went to women in 2016 versus 2017, there wasn't much of a change. But I do think that we have seen some movement this quarter. But again, I think we're at this really important point where we need men to get involved. You know, men still meter the oxygen in so many ways. Um, you know, they are 90% of VC investors. And so we need them to jump in and say, how can I be an ally? How can I work with women to make this change happen? That said, you know, we're continuing to see um, companies, you know, you point out the, the scooter companies that are valued at yeah. a billion plus dollars. And, you know, it's almost yeah. unheard of for, for a company founded by a woman uh, to get top dollar. The, the, the skeptics would say that, that women aren't founding companies um, with big uh, visions, uh, you know, huge earnings potential. What's your response to that? Well, I think you should take a look at the Riveter. Uh, we're opening our fifth location in 16 months, which means we're outpacing WeWork's early years. I think that to say it's a pipeline problem or to say that women aren't ambitious and can't build billion dollar companies is 100% wrong. And I think there's so much opportunity and I think that investors who get on the right side of that will win. Knowing that uh, Tesla needs to build a, a diverse workplace, SpaceX as well, you know, what is your advice to Elon Musk as, you know, he has the SEC on his back for, for, for simply the way that he has communicated all of this information? Yeah, I mean, I think Elon Musk is a visionary. He wants to change the world, uh, and Tesla can do incredible things. And I think that Elon is taking a good step in showing up as his authentic self, and I think he should own it. Um, and, you know, as a former litigator, uh, the lawyer in me has to say that perhaps you shouldn't share everything via Twitter. <laughs>